Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Jeremiah chapter 15. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1, Jeremiah 15, verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet their mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Now remember, the Lord loved Moses and Samuel. But even, oh, there was a time when Moses actually interceded for Israel for the Lord not to destroy them. In Exodus chapter 32, Moses is up on the mountain. I believe he was getting ready to come down with the Ten Commandments. So everybody wanted uh, Aaron to make him a golden calf. So everybody gave uh, Aaron some gold and they made a golden calf and started worshiping it. Some Bible commentators think that uh, they were dancing around naked around the golden calf because that's the kind of stuff that they would, the heathens would do. So, you know, Moses comes down from the mount. Uh, in verse 15, it says, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other side were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. So here it is. He comes down. Uh, you know, Moses sees him with the, uh, the golden calf. Oh, okay. Yep, I was right. Verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked under their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And uh, and he said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. Oh boy. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, uh, this is verse 30, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord, peradventure I will make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sins, their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of my, thy book which thou hast written. Did you know your names can be blotted out of the book of life? Oh, yeah. Tell that to the Baptist church. They won't believe you. They don't care what the Bible says. Verse 33, And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. 
So here it is. Moses made intercession for the people. And he's asking the Lord to forgive them, forgive their sin. And he says, well, if you won't do it, then blot me, I pray thee, out of, the, out of thy book which thou hast written. You know, Moses was making intercession for the people. Not that Moses was perfect, but, you know, Moses was, uh, he was something. And Samuel was a stand-up guy, too. All right, um, Jeremiah 15.1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they will say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou, uh, then thou shalt tell them, so, verse 2, pay, pay attention. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? You know, where are we going? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are for death, to death. And such as are for the sword, to the sword. And such as are for the famine, to the famine. And such as are for captivity, to the captivity. Wow. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. So there's going to be death, sword, war, famine, starvation, and captivity, which is slavery. Oof. I think the Lord is extremely unhappy with his people. What do you think? All right, uh, what's that deal about the dogs tearing? Well, do you know that there's two types of dogs in the Bible? There's obviously four-legged dogs. But did you know there's two-legged dogs? Chaplain Bob, what are you talking about? Well, go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog. That's called parallelism. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, how do you, you know, a dog, obviously, a four-legged dog, uh, you know, they can't do a vow. In other words, you don't take a prostitute's money or the money of a sodomite and take it into the church. God don't want it. He don't want their money. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow or promise. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. 
Uh, what is this about, you know, putting money in the Lord's house? Well, let's read Matthew 27. Jesus was taken in the garden, and he had the trial. So let's read about Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. You know, another, you know, they're like, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> that doesn't concern us. You do whatever you want to do with that money, you know. What is that to us? See thou to that. Verse 5. And he, Judas, and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, Oh, it's not lawful to put, uh, to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. Ah, so it's okay to lie and have a, a false accusers at a fake trial and to condemn Christ to death but you don't want to take blood money and put it back into the, the, the treasury of the temple? Oh boy. Yeah, well, you know, hey, we got to follow the law. It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. Yeah, it was blood money. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, the uh, that field is called the field of blood unto this day. Thus was, thus was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, Jeremiah, right? We haven't gotten there yet. Thus was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Now, if you don't know it, uh, according to some, 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. That's what Christ was worth to them. So, Jeremiah 15, 3, And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear. But in this instance, I think it's a four-legged dog. And the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. Uh, Manasseh was a bad king, in the Lord's eyes, anyways. Verse 5. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Yeah, is anybody going to stop and say, hey, how you doing? No. Verse 6. For thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore I will stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. The Lord is weary of repenting. Now there's a big difference between 
man repenting and the Lord repenting. Big difference. All of us have to repent of our wickedness, our sin, our iniquity. But the Lord doesn't have iniquity or sin to repent of. When he repents, it means he's changing his mind. Like when uh, in the book of Jonah, the Lord sent Jonah to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, and told him in 30 days, I'm going to overthrow Nineveh. But the people repented. They put on sackcloth. They put on, uh, they sat in ashes. And they turned from the wickedness in their hands. And the Lord repented of destroying Nineveh. I'm sorry, it wasn't 30 days, it was 40 days. Uh, let's see. Jonah chapter 3. I guess we'll, we'll read it. And the word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh, through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast, but let man and beast, beast, be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. This beast, from the violence that is in their hands, is this a two-legged beast being covered with sackcloth to cry mightily unto God? And to turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands? Is there a two-legged beast that can do all this? Do four-legged beasts have hands? Can they cry mightily unto God? Huh. Think about that. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent... And turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. Good question. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. See, there's a big difference between us repenting and the Lord repenting. Jeremiah 15, 6. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. Uh, what, when you're trying to start a fire, what do you do? You fan it. Give it more air so it'll burn. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Oh, boy. Their widows are increased to me above the sand of the seas. 
I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. She that hath borne seven languisheth. She hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it is yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded, and the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent on usury, nor men have lent to me on usury, yet every one of them doth curse me. Can you imagine that? God's people curse him. Oh, wait. Yeah, they do that now. And the Lord said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. So here it is. Jeremiah was promised to the Lord, Verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Shall iron break the northern iron and the steel? The substance and thy treasures will I give to the spoil without price, and that for all thy sins, even in all thy borders. And I will make thee to pass with thine enemies into a land which thou knowest not. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, which shall burn upon you. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me, and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. God had filled him with extreme indignation, probably at their wickedness. Verse 18. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me as a liar? and as waters that fail. Therefore thus saith the Lord, If thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. So that's the end of chapter 15. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.